from the same people that brought you the Alliance Chieftain and the Alliance Challenger, we have this, the Alliance Crusader. If you've flown the Chieftain and the Challenger, then this ship is a familiar sight and in my opinion it's the best looking out of the three, given it's got the same full size engine pylon configuration as the Chieftain as opposed to, as opposed to the stubby front wings of the Challenger. And then you have this rear wing that completes the look. Annoyingly, that rear wing isn't something that's available to the Chieftain as a ship kit, otherwise mine would be already wearing it. Because for some reason it just gives the ship that little bit more presence than the other two ships in the Chieftain line. There are some questionable design choices. For example, at some point down the line, Lacon decided to put a fourth seat into the cockpit. And in an emergency situation where you need to get out of the cockpit quickly, it looks like it would block literally everyone from getting out in a hurry. Although at least if you're blown to oblivion because of it, it will stop your body being harvested by Fargoids or worse. But largely from an aesthetic perspective, it's the same old Type X design that we've come to know and love with an added wing. As with the other two ships, the Crusader is primarily designed for annoying space bugs on a budget. And in terms of cost, this is the ship that sits in the middle and a bit like that central co-pilot chair, it's in a bit of an awkward position. It's not got the staggering value of the Chieftain, but it's not as expensive as the Challenger either. At a glance, this ship has a hard point deficiency compared to the other two, whilst it does have the same number as the Chieftain. The hard points overall work out as being less powerful, and although it can take more armour than the Chief, it lacks the stopping power of the Challenger when using its hard points offensively. But then, this ship has something the other two don't. The ability to bring a fighter or two into the fray. Which for anti-Xeno combat isn't really something that I fully embraced as it's not my style when squashing bugs. Since NPC pilots get squished fairly quickly and when you have a human co-pilot you can get more rubber banding than you would in a rubber band factory. But dabbling with a fighter against non-Fargoid threats while someone else takes the hell? It can make a vast difference. At least it could if I hadn't sacked my previous crewmate for answering me back for the last time. With Mr. Harmless here, it's a little less effective, but he is learning. One day he'll work out which end of a fighter is which, and when that day happens, he'll be able to make an effective contribution that's arguably more effective than any hard point I can add to the ship. And if you feel inclined and have the right sort of co-pilot, you can throw two fighters out into combat just to give that a little bit of extra shove. It's not the fastest ship in the galaxy or the most agile. Hell, it's not even the fastest or the most agile ship out of the Chieftain line. In fact, depending where you look, it's the heaviest, slowest and least agile out of its sister ships. Despite that though, it's still plenty quick enough and agile enough to handle itself in a fight against both large and small threats because it shares that same basic DNA as the Chieftain, especially if you throw some dirty drag drives onto it, they really do help. At a glance though, its armour does look like it's roughly on par with the Challenger, which can shrug off any attack where the opponent isn't putting in a huge amount of effort. But again, it's less agile than the Challenger, so unless a fighter or two is being thrown into the battle, I'd rather take a Challenger even if it does cost another 5 million credits. It's also got the lowest potential jump range out of the fray. With engineering and a frameshift booster, you can squeeze a shade over 45 light years per jump out of it, but if you must take this design of Hull into the black, save a few credits and take a Chieftain. You'll be able to squeeze an extra 10 light years or so out of the Chieftain, thanks to its lower mass. Of course, some people will want to take a fighter on their exploration trip regardless, and to that I'd say either to take a Crate Mark II if you can afford it, or if you are on a budget, take a Keelback. The Keelback is a great ship for exploration if you need a fighter, and you can get a lot more range out of it than you can the Challenger. Trading and mining aren't much to write home about either, given the amount of space that's taken up with military compartments as opposed to standard compartments, but... That's a flaw with all ships in this particular line. Here's the thing. The Crusader has the potential to be a truly excellent combat ship. One of the best in the price point. 
but that's only the case if you're planning on using the fighters to the full extent. Otherwise, it feels that Lacon just made too many compromises and too many sacrifices compared to both the Chieftain and Challenger just to add in that fighter bay. Which is unfortunate because I really, really want to love this ship. But as much as the occasional scrap using a fighter is fun, this isn't the sort of ship I'd use a fighter with to begin with. Usually it would be something bigger and less agile like a Anaconda or Corvette. So as it stands, I don't love this ship. And aside from the looks, I'm not even sure I like it. Which is surprising given the excellence of the rest of the line. I don't dislike it either though. I think it's taken me so long to review this ship after the Chieftain and Challenger is because I simply... Well, I simply nothing this ship. Some ships are liked, some are disliked, some are respected, some are revered. But the Crusader falls into a void where it just doesn't get much of a reaction from me. And again, that's a real shame. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this one. Next one is looking like it's probably going to be the Orca, so hopefully you'll stick around for that. Take care, much love, and 07. Thank you.